Hey guys, Cha Chan here, and uh, this is a real time sketching video. And I think this is my first video that I've done real time like this. It's just a sketch, but the last one I did was a five minute challenge, and you know, it's a five minute challenge. But anyway, so I'm drawing one of my original characters, whose name is Rainford Holofernes, and he's like a spirit or a ghost of some kind. There's more information on like my Instagram, I think. I don't know if I actually talked properly about him. Oh, I don't know. But anyway, so I won't really talk about him very much. Unless anyone wants me to, I can expand in a different video. But for now, I will talk about art advice. Because I've been meaning to do a video like this for ages. Um, I was going to do it in a different format, but since I haven't gone around to doing that, I may as well start talking about art advice in this video. So, um, I don't really have a proper structure for this video, I'm just gonna read my list and talk about stuff. <laughs> okay, so my first point, point, piece of advice, I'm gonna say enjoy how your art looks now. Know that you will improve. When you look back, you might think, oh, this looked terrible, but enjoy how it looks. Like, acknowledge what you could improve on, but also think, hey, I did pretty good on this. So, just enjoy it. Don't criticize yourself constantly. Um, so, just acknowledge the bad things and improve them next time, because that's all you can do. So, yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, my next point is to loosen up while sketching. Uh, I see a lot of beginner artists sketch kind of like they take the pencil and scribble back and forth to get a shape out. Um, I don't know if you can really see when I'm doing this video, but like I don't scribble backwards and forwards, I just do one smooth movement. <laughs> um, so. Yeah, just don't like scribble your lines out unless you're going for a certain like effect. Like, there's always exceptions to rules and stuff. But your art will improve if you start sketching really loosely. And it might be difficult to do at first since you're used to sketching in a different way, but it will be worth it in the end. Um, and also, loose sketches do tend to have more movement, which is something that is good. I guess. Um, and I think that's all my sketching advice. Um, another big one is, oh well, they're all kind of like big things that you should acknowledge. Uh, study real anatomy, <laughs> like seriously. I did not study real anatomy and it is a big mistake. <laughs> I'm not saying you have to like draw like nude figures, like you don't have to do that, I wouldn't do that because I'd be slightly uncomfortable, but uh, just like, there's lots of sites online where you can do figure drawing with like clothes, like models in clothes. <laughs> um, and like that's also good because you can learn how to draw fabric as well. So I really recommend trying to do some figure drawing and study some real anatomy because I did not and my art suffered because of it. So, yeah, learn from my mistake. <laughs> um, sorry, I'm reading this like a list, but, you know, listen to what I'm saying. I know it's not really the most exciting video, but, you know, it could be worse. <laughs> um, something I do see a lot of people do is hiding the hands or one of the eyes, and I really recommend not doing that. Like, you can obviously... You know, there's exceptions to the rule, like, does your character have a fringe that covers one eye? Then, yeah, alright, or does your character only have one eye? Then, yeah, yes, exceptions and stuff. Um, or one hand, you know, or no hands. I don't know. But seriously, if your character has two hands and two eyes, draw both of them. Unless, like, you know, you can't see one of the hands for a genuine reason. Just don't put the hands behind the back. It's kind of like, but you can do that if you want, but 
the only way to get better at drawing something is to draw it. <laughs> um, I did not draw hands for a while, and every time I drew a hand it looked terrible, but I started just studying, not even studying, just drawing them. Always use reference because I didn't use a reference and now my hands look a bit weird. Um, not my real hand, my real hands I think look fairly normal. <laughs> but um, like my car, yeah, cars. <laughs> my character's hands always look a bit weird. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna blame it on my style because that's what I should totally do. <laughs> no, but seriously. Uh, don't hide an eye or a hand just because you don't want to draw it. Um, and oh, what was the other thing? Oh yeah, expressions. <laughs> Always try to push the expression more than you think. Like, say you draw someone looking angry, uh, and then you think, oh, this looks okay. But uh, I don't know. Like, try and push the expression even more. So. Mm, I'm just trying to think of how to word things. I should have scripted this. So, uh, okay, happy, that's an easier one. So you might draw a character smiling and the eyes might just be, like, normal and change, like, just open, and then the mouth might be upturned, and, you know, smiling. Uh, but try, like, pushing that. Try and, like, open the mouth and bring it up more at the corners, like, cause the mouth go up more, open the mouth slightly, maybe show some teeth, maybe not, I don't know. And, like, Pull the corner of the eye up as well, so it's like really happy. Uh, I am. I should really have like examples on screen, but I don't really know how to put uh, images on top of anything here. Uh, I'll figure out my editing software eventually. <laughs> um, but also do the same with poses. So your character might just be standing there. Try and like uh, do something with that, like. Instead of just having them standing with their arms by their sides, which they can if you want them to, but uh, say you want them to have like some kind of personality going on, like put a hand on a hip or uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> just play around with poses. It's it's fun. Um, what else do I need to talk about? Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, colors. Colors are difficult, but. You will get there eventually. Well, everything's difficult in art, and some things are more difficult than other things, but you know, you get there eventually. So, I, well, a lot of artists recommend the same thing don't use fully saturated colours for everything. Like, there are exceptions, like in style or a highlight, but don't say, oh, I need a red, and then on the little colour picker thing, pick red and it's all the way up at the brightest possible colour, uh, but that's just an example. I mean, you can do that, but there's like exceptions, you know. But say you were colouring like an entire drawing and you wanted like red, blue, green, you wouldn't have all of those colours straight up saturated. Um, and also like, uh, when you're colouring things, uh, like don't be afraid to just change the hue of that colour slightly. Like, it depends on the lighting, um, you know, stuff like that. Uh, so don't be afraid to, like, play around with colours as well. Uh, and also try and work out a colour palette before you start. I don't do that, and I really should, because it can end up kind of looking bad. Uh, try and figure out a proper colour palette before you, like, you know, do the entire picture. Um, but, you know, it's, it's alright. <laughs> Um, that's everything on my list of things to talk about, I think. Oh, foreshortening! And also I need to give some advice on drawing hands, apparently. I made this list quite a while ago. So, I think I'll talk about hands first, because that seems easier than perspective and stuff. So, hands. They are considered the most difficult thing to draw. By a lot of people. <laughs> to be honest, I've been enjoying drawing hands recently. I enjoy drawing hands for some reason. Don't know. They're just fun to draw. Um, but study real hands. Look at a photo. Look at your own hand. Um, 
and draw it. Even if you're stylizing it, just use a reference. <laughs> um, and don't be afraid to like make mistakes because that's how you learn. Like, draw that hand in the weird position and like stuff. <laughs> like, um, hmm. Try to think of stuff to say. I didn't script this probably. <laughs> so, uh, like I was saying, don't hide the hands. And also, don't be afraid to draw a hand that is not just in its, you know, straight out waving position. <laughs> um, like, draw hands from different angles and stuff. And be loose while you're sketching the hands. And break them down into, like, small shapes. Small shapes? Big shapes? I don't know. Shapes. Like, uh, there's a bit of debate on whether you should use a circle or a square. I say use whatever you want as a base shape for your hand. In this one, I used circles, I mean the skeleton hands, so, you know. Um, I don't really study proper anatomy or skeleton hands, but I did use a reference for a different drawing, and I remembered roughly what the hand should look like. Yeah, I didn't use a reference for this one. It's been a while since I drew this one, actually. But anyway, um, so yeah, just be loose while sketching the hands, draw them from different angles, break them down into easy shapes, and then build up on that once you have the hand. I'll make a proper tutorial at some point, I think. Um, and finally, perspective and foreshortening. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> so this one I am still improving on. Foreshortening became a bit easier for me recently. Um, I haven't actually drawn anything with foreshortening in a bit, actually. I should probably do that. But anyway, so with foreshortening, there are tons of ways to do it. I don't think I can really give good advice. But uh, what I did, I literally just practiced all these different techniques that people recommended online and yeah, literally just online, no one in person has advice on this stuff. Well, they didn't when I was learning it. But yeah, um, try, let's search up tutorials and also try and figure stuff out yourself. Like, I ended up figuring out the best way for me to do it was literally just to draw the thing, like the arm, bigger and then like, you know, do it from there. <laughs> I can't really explain how I draw things. But some people use like boxes or a spiral, that spiral one, um, oh, what was the artist's name? I can't remember, but um, you might have seen it was quite popular. People using spirals to make the foreshortening. <laughs> uh, but yeah, just keep practicing and I know that's like the advice everyone gives. And yeah, a lot of artists just give the advice to practice and I've done that before. And, Really, I should, but like I am trying to do here, is to give you some more advice and expand on that. Um, it is true that all you can do is practice, but you know you've got to know what to practice. Uh, but yeah, foreshortening is difficult, and you should have seen some of my early attempts. It was pretty uh, horrific, but you know that that's good because it means I've improved. Like if you are perfect at doing something first time then that's pretty good, but if you're really good then, then imagine what it's going to be like in a couple of years, like, pretty good, right? <laughs> um, perspective, though, that is a difficult one that I honestly can't even begin to <laughs> do anything with. Uh, I recommend going and looking at someone else's tutorial on perspective, because I'm terrible at it. <laughs> um, I'll mention backgrounds, though. So. I'm terrible at backgrounds, and I literally only ever draw forests because that's the easy thing to draw. <laughs> uh, buildings are a nightmare, but I really recommend going out into, like, outside. <laughs> I know, scary. <laughs> and like, looking at an actual town and drawing it. That's something good. But anyway, I'm running out of time. Hope you enjoyed the video, and bye! <laughs>